Okay, oh, that doesn't look good. What's going on there? Device disconnected. Okay, let's see. Now I'm rotated. Cool. Are you back? Go back. Do something like that. Okay. This is too wide. Hello, 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 everyone. Alrighty. Oh my, more <laughs> more linked lists. Exactly. Exactly, exactly. All right, what's going on in chat today? Better Call Saul. Is that still going? Just got VS Code set up and I don't want to go back. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. But it's, sometimes, it's nice to like struggle so that you appreciate um, the nice tools that we have now. Um, Our uh, final season. Cool. Okay. Well, I hope everyone's doing well. Um, I don't think there's much admin we need to talk about, which is cool um, because we can just get into linked list. Oh, now on the slides, good uh, thing to bring up, Will. Um, everything is up, but they're slightly out of order. So I've got a, so it's, yesterday's we actually did 7.2 instead of 7.1. Um, so like the PDF was, is just in the wrong spot. There's been some issues with it. So after today's lecture, I should be able to go through and fix it all up. Um, but, um, yeah, I'm going to talk about the lectures in a second today. So yeah, but it's all there. We'll just fix it up. So, um, on the lectures, well, on the slides specifically, we have some slides today, um, talking about more things that we can do with our linked lists. And I actually want to spend a bit of time at the beginning of the lecture, just going through what we've already got and sort of cleaning it up, making it a bit more robust, a bit tighter. Um, I've got some notes. Um, but so there's lots of slides that basically do some diagrams for a few different operations, but rather than me go through all the slides and 
you know, switch to code, switch to something else. What I was thinking of doing, like there's no concepts in these slides. It's just sort of, right, you see what I'm saying? It's just sort of like the diagrams that we were making yesterday. So all the slides are available to you. So if you want to go back and study um, or study them while you watch the lecture or something like that, you've got them all as a reference. However, I thought we'll keep it a little less structured today. We'll just jump into code. We will do things. And when we come across something that we need to sort of think about, I'll jump to the whiteboard and we'll basically build these diagrams ourselves, but we can be a little bit more bespoke and specific to the exact thing that we're trying to do. Does that make sense to everyone? So the slides are still relevant. Go look them up as a resource, but we might go a little bit less structured. We can just do things that we think that we want to do. Um, and where we do need some diagrams, we can just draw them up ourselves because I think it's a nice way of doing things. So if that sounds good to everyone, um, I think basically let's get straight into it. So I'll uh, keep in mind, Tammy, that the, the lecture code will go there, but it won't be live because it's not on. It's not going to be live because I'm running locally. So I'll have to push it up later, if that makes sense. Okay. All right. And for those of you who didn't, who haven't watched yesterday's lecture, um, thinking what, what's going on here, we're using, I'm using Visual Studio Code um, locally on my desktop um, um, because it's a more natural environment for me and I don't have to use Tiger VNC to write some code. So I'm going to be writing this code and compiling it locally. You can work wherever it is you want to work. Um, Gabe asks a great question. If we use VS Code, is there a way to store our files on UNSW servers? Absolutely there is. Um, in fact, let me show you something. Um, so Abiram is a student at UNSW who's written up an article on how to connect VS Code to, um, so that you can use Visual Studio Code and it will run on um, the CC, your VLAB machine, basically. Um, so I, ha I just haven't set this up, but maybe for the future lectures, it might be a good setup. But at the moment, this is like truly local to, to my computer. Okay. But yeah, if you want to spend some time, because then all the work will be saved on your um, VLAB computer. Yeah, thanks, Tommy. Okay, do we want to uh, just go through the code as it is for a second to get familiar with it again? So what have we got going on? So this is the exact same code we finished the lecture with yesterday. So we've got about five or six functions here um, that all start to do things and manipulate our links list. What is a links list? Let's just recap it really quickly one more time. It, the way we've implemented it and the way it's mostly implemented in C is that it's a struct that contains some data. In this case, the data is just an integer and a pointer to another struct in memory. And what that allows us to do is follow that pointer, follow that address and chain together a series of structs. So what we are more fam familiar with is having an array of integers, for example, and our, our data structure, our array is just a collection of integers. What we're doing now is saying, let's put this integer or whatever, whatever data it is that we're modeling into a struct and also store a reference to another uh, struct to allow us to link, link together in some sort of list, a linked list, um, these integers um, or whatever, whatever it is that's in our node. Now, in order to do that, we need some functionality to allow us to manipulate that structure. And that's essentially what we do when we make like a linked list structure is we define the functions um, that manipulate our linked list that allow us to use it. Um, so one of the first things we need to be able to do is create the actually create and link together these nodes. And that's what we've been doing. 
Um, we did this two lectures ago. We did it, we looked at it again yesterday, so we can create some nodes. What does creating a node roughly entail? Well, we take the data that we, we want to wrap inside of a, a node, and we take um, the address of the node that this node should point to. Um, but that could be a null address because it might not point to anything. We take the data, we malloc it, um, we malloc the size of a struct, and we assign the memory address that malloc returns to um, a new address of a, of a struct node. We assign its data to the data that's passed in, and we assign the next address um, to whatever address is passed in, and again, that could just be null. Um, and then we return the address uh, of this node that we created. Why is this an address? Because we made an address to a struct node. We didn't make a node itself, okay? Malik made enough memory for the node. So that allows us to create a few, um, link them together, and then we can start doing other things with it, like printing all of them, inserting at the end is one that we did yesterday, um, and so forth. Malloc just prevents overflowing, right? Uh, not quite. Malloc is the only way we can create memory allocations on the heap. Um, so it's not to prevent overflowing. It's just how we uh, um, ask the computer to allocate us enough memory to create this node um, so that it won't disappear when this function ends. Remember, when a function ends, all of the data it creates is lost unless we use malloc and then that data is created on the heap. And when we do some visualizations, that'll, I think, make a lot of sense to us. And please, if you've got any questions, just start to throw them in the chat as we go over this really quick recap. All right, let's look at printing because printing is a really useful um, thing. Um, so we take in a pointer to a node and usually it's the first uh, node in our linked list. So we call that node the head, but it's just a name that we've decided here. We say, okay, find the current node and make a new node and a, a node pointer and just say that it points to the same position as the head pointer. And the way we can um, loop through all our, all our elements is just with a while loop. And what we say is while the node is not null, so while there is a node that we're, that we're pointing to, um, just basically print its data and now shift my current node pointer to not point to where it was pointing to, but to point to the next, um, point, uh, next node in the list. That might be null, at which point this condition will fail, we'll print a new line and we'll stop the function. Um, and that's how we iterate through the links list. Does the malloc function just store the data until the end of the main function, just to clarify? Good question, Nicholas. Um, the answer is yes. The heap memory will be cleaned up by the operating system when the program ends. Um, but but the, the, the sort of risk of malloc is that it's a manual memory allocation. Therefore, um, if you don't delete the data as you create it, as you lo no longer need it, you will have memory leaks in your program, um, which is generally not a good thing. So Gabe, yeah, you, you, you do have to free it. Okay, let me clarify. That's a, you've, you've found a good sort of thing here. When the program ends, the operating system will free the heap. So it will undo the memory leak you've maybe potentially created. Hopefully not, because you're great programmers, right? So it, will, it knows how to clean up after your leaky program. Um, the, the, the leak is an issue while your program is running. So if you've got a long living program, the memory link might build up, build up, build up, build up, and then you crash. When you crash, the operating system will reclaim that memory, just as it will when the program ends, right? So this is why um, there's a, the um, sort of bit, a bit of a meme, but one of the airline, uh, one of the plane manufacturers, um, their operating system for the plane has so many memory leaks that in the guideline, the operating guidelines, they tell the, I guess the engineers or the pilots to reset the plane's computer every time it lands because any memory leaks that there are won't be a problem because the program will reset, the memory will reset and the, it won't amount to be a problem. Um, is that a bit concerning? Maybe a bit concerning, but it's also not 
going to be a problem. So it's safer just to do it. So yeah, the operating system is always the, 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 you know, it knows all. It knows where you've malleked data um, and it will clean it up if it needs to. However, once again, you should be freeing data that you no longer need. Um, okay, that's printing and traversing. Yesterday, we looked at inserting at the end of the list. What does this entail? Well, basically, we loop through all of the, the nodes, just like we do when we're printing. Once we get to the last node, not null, that's why our condition here looks slightly different to the printing. While we're at the last node, um, we stop the loop, we come down to here, we create a new node with um, whatever value it is that we wanted to add. In fact, really quickly, this should be um, int data to add, you know, data and then the node itself, and then I should put data here, right? Um, and because this is the, the, the responsibility of this function is to insert a node at the end of this, the linked list, then um, we always know that the new node we're creating is not going to point to anything because we're at the end. And then we set the, the, the previous last node to now point to this new node that we created and we can return the head reference. Um, and so, for example, this is how we return something you had. And because I changed this function, I've got to go and change its prototype. There we go. And if we're calling insert at end, um, now I can give it the data, you know, that I want to insert. Did that water bottle have a battery compartment at the bottom? No, <laughs> it doesn't. Um, assignment two is the final assignment for 1511. How hard is it relative to assignment one? It's, I mean, linked list, lists are maybe a little harder than, you, than arrays and 2D arrays, but you'll be okay. It's not an airline. It was a plane manufacturing company. You can Google it. I think you'll find the story. I don't want to be sued for libel. Um, assignment two will be released towards the end of the week. We'll talk about the final exam um, in the future, Nicholas. Um, let's not stress about it now. Okay, so that's enough. I think we're all hopefully somewhat okay with what we have so far. Like I said, I wanted to go through and clean up a little, a few little things, make it a bit nicer so that we've got this really nice reference program that you could all, all sort of look to. And yes, the final exam, actually, good point, Nicholas was just announced today will be on August 12th for one for us. Um, so if you want to mark that in your calendars, that's actually not a bad thing to do. So it'll be August 12th, early on in the exam period. Okay. So one thing we can do, this, this is now completely just for a sort of a nicety, is if we, so if we run this program, Um, what well, we compile it, then we run it. Um, there we go. We're inserting that 50. Um, and then I think we remove the final node, which is why we get one, two, three again. But I think we, there's a, we can print these linked lists a little nicer. Oh yeah. And if you, again, if you weren't here for yesterday's lecture, I don't have DCC installed on my Mac. So I'm using a different C compiler. Use DCC. It's much, uh, it does a lot of, um, really helpful things. Okay, so rather than printing a new line after after the the value, we can print this sort of arrow. And what this will do is, I think this is nice. It's like showing our linked lists in a single line, right? It's a bit of a nicer representation, um, and it's a pretty small thing. And then we print the new line at the end. That's cool. And then we kind of do show that, um, or we could even put here like, this points to null. Um, Cause that's what our linked lists actually do. So I think this is a really nice, like a, a nicer representation 
um, for when we're debugging and, and doing things like this. Probably will agree. Okay. So that's what I wanted to do there. What else did I want to do? I, I went through all of the code recently and I, um, um, well, just like this morning and I was like, okay, what, what are some of the things that we can talk about? A lot of them are in the lecture notes. A lot of them um, are ones that I just think are really useful. Um, so let's see here. What, we, what have we got? Remove the tail. And I'm just looking at some other code I've got here. Oh, we never did size of the linked list. Did anyone have a go at um, writing this yourself? Did anyone want to paste a solution maybe? Yeah, Matthew, do you want to do it? You, you commented first, Benjamin. Or anyone, anyone who's got it, do you want to paste it in? And we'll see how it goes. Two hundred uh two hundred character limit. Yeah, basically Windows okay, don't worry about it. That I think you've all got the idea. If we take the um let's take the while loop that we wrote here. Um and then we will want Oops. Struct node current is equal to the head pointer. Um, um, while the next node is not blah, 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 do this, do this. We can have int i equals zero here. And then we also go i plus plus there. And then basically we just return i. Whoops, not one, I, something like this. Um, now, will this work if there's one node in the thing? If there's only one node, the loop will never run. If there's two nodes, it'll run once. So I think we actually want to return I plus one here. Um, let's test it. We print the linked list here. We can then print f percent d backslash n comma the size of the linked list passing in the head pointer. Um, that's an error, error there. Line one hundred. Ah, we don't need we don't need the previous there. The size is three. One, two, three. That sounds good to me. Um, let's see. Yeah, you could do current is not equal to null. I suppose as well. Either either will work. Yeah. Um, boop, boop, boop. can't you just use the print list function and initialize it there? Uh, you could, but then it would always print the list. Maybe I don't want it. Maybe I don't want it to print the list, print the list. You could also do it recursively, Daniel, but be careful, be careful. Okay. So there, that's a pretty decent, um, size of linked list. There is one thing as well that we, we, we haven't really spoken about in terms of the robustness of our code. What happens, let's say, what happens if I pass in, um, you know, an, a null head pointer. So let's say we, we assign this to null. Um, so I, if we've got basically a linked list with no with no node, we're probably going to get a crash. Um, this is not really a good thing because it is valid to have a linked list with no nodes. So something we haven't really spoken about is to sort of guard our, um, our, our code a little bit. So we can basically the way we do that is quite simple is we can just say, well, if the head pointer is null itself, 
um, we can just return zero, right? And this will now no longer crash. It'll just say, okay, well, the size of my list is zero. Um, so keep in mind, for example, um, that you might want to do checks like this in a few of the functions where you may receive an empty list. Um, you, I, alternative, like we've, like we've been sort of saying, you could do while current is not equal to null, current is equal to uh, the current dot next, add i, and then I think we just don't return i there. Uh, re return i plus one. I think this might also work. Yeah. So either, either work here, but um, it's not a bad idea to sometimes have these explicit checks. Okay. Um, doo -doo -doo. We can leave this like that. Yep. Okay. So what have we done now? We've done size of linked list. Yep. Um, Okay, we have not done, okay, we've done remove tail. So remove tail removes the final node. Um, and this is another example of a function where um, we would need to have a check for current being null, because we never actually check it. Um, so Gabe is saying, does the nature of linked lists mean that they can only be searched linearly? Absolutely. Yes, that is correct. Um, they're not randomly accessible like arrays. So you can't say, I want to access, you know, node seven in my linked list. You'd have to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, for example. Have we covered printing a linked, a list backwards? Well, you, I'll ask you, is that possible? Oh, you've asked, is it possible? <laughs> it's a good topic. What does everyone else think? Is it possible? Let's do a poll. Wow, 96% saying yes, it's possible. Okay, how do you do it? It'd be, I'd be pretty impressed if you could figure it out. Um, with, with, with the linked list that we get, that we have here, um, <laughs> reverse it, then print it. Um, that would be nice. Let's get our little whiteboard up again. If we remember... Like these are our elements. This could be the, the number 5, 15, 2, 3. And these are linked to each other. What's the shortcut for this? X. Beautiful. Alright, and then this points off to nothing. Um, if this is our linked list, if we start here, I can go here, follow next, I can print, follow next, print, follow next, print, follow next, print, then I'm at null. If I start here, okay, hold on, I might understand how, why some of you are saying it, it is possible. The, the, the question is loaded, so... There's two ways to approach it. If you start at, if you are starting at the head node, then it's possible. Instead of printing it, you save the data five in like, yeah, in like an array or something. So you go like five, then you move, and then you just do the exact same thing you do when you print. And then you just print the array out backwards. What I thought you were more saying was, um, if you had, if you only had this, Right pointer, so like you had something that was pointing to here, 
then there's no way to print it backwards because the the arrow only goes next which is this is for whatever reason what i assumed people thought you meant when you were saying it's possible um, so yeah, you could just remember it printed backwards, but if you're already at the end of the node of the list, there's no way to go backwards in a linked list, unless you have a doubly linked list, which is when you have um, two pointers in each node that allow you to go backwards. And then it's then it's completely possible. This is called a doubly linked list, which we're not talking about. If you look at our struct, it's only got um, one pointer in it for the next node, not the previous. Yeah, Krishna, well done. Okay, very good questions, keep them coming. All right, so size of the linked list we got done. What else do I have here? All right, so I've got, I'm going to just copy it actually. I think this is useful. Deleting the first node. So here we have removing the tail. So removing the last node. How do we go about deleting the first node? Um, what can I say? I know it all. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So we could put it here, for example, paste that in, put that in. We could write our little comment. So deletes the first node in in a linked list. Its parameters are the head of the linked list. Say so a pointer to the head of the linked list, and it uh, returns um, a head. To the linked list. Um, someone's asked, can we make a cyclical linked list where the last node points to the head? You absolutely can. Uh, we don't cover them in 1511, but they are a um, they are a valid linked list. Yep. Okay, delete first node. What have I got for this? Okay, I actually okay, I actually did something a bit different here. Let me do um, Let me do delete node at position. Um, and then let me also pass in int position here. Oops. Okay, this is actually what I want to do first. So it deletes a node in a linked list at a position. Um, parameters, it's the linked list and the position. So what this is saying is if we go to our little whiteboard here, um, basically if I've got this linked list, I want to delete zero, one, two, let's say two. I want to delete this node and then connect it this way. Um, so that's what this function is. Um, okay, another good question here. What's the difference between struct node function and struct node star function? So the, the question is, what's the difference between this and, and this? And the answer is there's no difference. It's a stylistic difference. I can't remember exactly if we prefer one in 1511. Um, Tammy or Patrick will let us know. Um, it's a bit of a hotly debated question on if we should decorate the type with the asterisk or the name of the function. I think I personally believe it should go with the type because we're describing that the type, okay, well, there you go. I'm <laughs> disagreeing with what the course is laid out to be. Although a lot of people do do it like Tammy has mentioned, which is like this. Um, the reason I think this makes more sense is because it's describing the type that gets returned, which is a pointer to a, a node. Um, but some people say it, it's a, yeah, just think of it differently. Yeah, it's hotly debated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The answer is it doesn't matter. 
pick one and stay consistent, which I haven't done, which is not good. Um, although I'm pretty, I'm pretty much consistent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just that one, I think, when I pasted it in. Okay, so let's have have a look at this. So uh, deletes, what have I got here? The node in a linked list at position. Um, it returns the head, okay, and it accepts the head of the list and the position. All right. All right. Let's see here. Um, so basically, there's two steps that we need to do if we think about it. Step one is traverse until the correct position, right? So we could be deleting anywhere in the linked list. So like when we print and we need to sort of follow through, go to here, then go to here. Let me undo this. And then go to here, and then go to here. We need to do something similar when we want to delete a node somewhere in the linked list. This is the, this will be the case anytime you need to do something somewhere in the list. So it could be adding an element in somewhere in the linked list. You would need to traverse each node and then do something. So step one is traverse the node, uh, traverse the linked list um, until we're at the correct position. Now, because we're talking about an index or a position, that should also give us a warning sign or a warning bell that we need to have a, some way to keep track of that position. So what I'm going to do here is say, well, let's keep a reference to where we are, right? Our current node. This is something we do every time we want to traverse usually. And we'll start it off at the same location that the head of the linked list is starting off at. So we're, we're, we're just making a new pointer and assigning it to uh, point to the same position as our linked list. Now, again, there's probably multiple ways we can do this. The way that I'm going to do it is also keep a reference to the previous, um, the previous position, and we can initialize that to the head pointer, but it might be a superfluous assignment. We'll have a look in a second, and I can't spell there. Okay, so we have these two nodes, similar to how we did one of the other functions. All right, and then we can also say int i equals zero, because we need to keep track of this i and make sure that it's less than the position, because then we'll know that we've moved through our linked list enough. How do we actually loop the same way we've always been looping? So we can just say while um, the current pointer, so the current, uh, the pointer to the linked list is not null. So while we're still at a node in the linked list, um, we loop through. We know at some point we're going to have to do i++, so increment increment i, that's usually at the bottom of our loop because we want to keep track of, of our counting. We also want to say, well, okay, so we go through the node, we go through the node, we go through the node. If at some point our, our, our index, our track um, is equal to the position, then we've found our spot where we want to delete the node. Um, Okay, but we'll do the actual delete later. Otherwise, we haven't found the correct position, so we need to move our references along. So the previous will equal the current, right? And the current will equal to the current, uh, the current next pointer, I++. Once the whole loop ends, we can just return the head. So we have our reference back to the start of the uh, linked list. Okay. What do we do once we found the spot where we want to delete the node? And this is where we have to sort of, if we think about it, right? So we have um, this I starts at zero. We're over here. We move here. We move here. Okay. Position is two. I, is, I is, will now be two. I don't know how visible this is. We're over here. What do we need to do? So we need to get the previous node and we, we can sort of figure it out, you know, by just thinking about it and point it to, and remember, we have this current, whoops, that's pointing to here because we've moved it along. 
So what we can do is we can take the pre and we let's also we can put it in and I can run through the whole thing sort of properly, but just to sort of describe it. Um, we can take the previous one and set its next to be current's next, which is here. And then we can just free this node. But even if we don't free it, you can sort of see we've already fixed, we've already done it. Like all we need to do is just set the previous. That's actually it. Um, it's a really sort of simple operation. Um, but we want to be careful, so we want to free our code. All right, so how do we do that? Well, we have this previous node and we have this current node. So we, like we just said in the whiteboard, the previous next is going to equal the current next. And then actually we're already done, but we do want to free current because, um, and then we can just return the head pointer because we finished with the function. Uh, actually, do we need to? This will be, yeah, we do need to return here. That way we don't keep looping because there'll be, there'll be more to loop through. It would still work, but there, there would be unnecessary loops. Um, so again, why do we need to have this free? Remember this, these nodes are in the heap, not in main. So this diagram's a little, a little off. These current and previous would be in the function. At the, this is what, if we didn't free, this is what it would look like. And the problem is this, this memory allocation here, our program would never know that it was no longer uh, required. It would stay there until the program ends. And if we did this multiple times, we would have some data there. We would have some data there. We would have some floating, you know, data here, data here, data here. And eventually, right, what's going to happen is we're going to run out of memory. That's a memory leak. If though, when we remove it, we free it, we, we, we get rid of it. And then we have no memory leak. We just have our nice little linked list. The function ends, these will get deleted because stack frames get deleted. And then we've got our nice little linked list here. Now, and that's basically that function done, I think. Um, are there any questions? How did that, so how, I know that was a bit faster than we usually write these. Um, then we usually write these sort of functions. Do you want me to, do you want me to uh, do it with the whiteboard again or something like that? Okay, what's chat going on here? I can't find anything about the whiteboard usage for int star, blah, blah, blah. I can't find it in star guide. Yeah, you definitely won't be marked down for that. Don't worry about that. I spoke about the free. How big is the heap? Great question. I sup Ugh, I actually don't know. Yeah. Maybe it depends on the amount of RAM you have, or maybe it's a set amount. Um, my guess is it's dynamic, basically. Um, my guess is that you could just use as much as you want until the operating system tells you you've had enough. Think about programs like Chrome, right, that use gigabytes and gigabytes of memory. Um, and the more RAM you've got, the more memory they'll use. So is position zero the first node in the list? Absolutely. Yep. Um, Noah says, what did the arrow pointer, the arrow operator mean again? Okay. Good question. Remember that previous is a pointer. So the pointer, now we know that it's pointing to a node. The node has a next in it, but the pointer itself does not, is not a struct, therefore doesn't have a node. So what we typically need to do is to dereference the pointer. Then we can access the next struct the next member in the struct. So we turn the pointer into the value it's pointing to. We follow the pointer, then we can access next. But this syntax is a bit annoying, especially if they're nested. So the arrow, right, the dash, and then the 
um, right caret symbol when put together, just do this for you. Dereferences the value and follows, uh, whoops, what did I just do? And follows the member in the struct, but they're equivalent. Um, what are the consequences about not freeing on the heap potential hacking when the file is compiled and ran? It's, so it's, it's nothing like that, Nicholas. Um, like I've said, the, the, the problem is if we, if we stop, um, oh, I've lost the history, but if we, if we didn't free every time we had this data, we would just eventually run, we would use too much memory and run out of memory. Um, so the reason we, we want to make sure we free is because we need to um, free up the, the memory that we're allocating. Because there's only a limited supply of memory. 8 gigabytes, 16, 32. I'm sure they're getting crazy now. Cool. Um, Yeah, it's to prevent memory leaks, exactly right. Okay. Yeah, I was just sort of running through my head if this works for when position is zero, but I think it does. Okay, so that leads me to the second thing I wanted to talk about. So we now have a way to delete um, a node at position zero. We can just call this function um, now we, okay, we, we wouldn't want to delete head pointer Cyril because the, whatever, the program passed us in a reference to a linked list that just happened to have nothing in it. Um, oh no, you're saying if there's one thing in it, is that what you're saying? Well, we can give it a go. Okay, so let's create a node that points to nothing like here, then we can go remove, oh, we've not actually called it. Why don't we, let's first of all, let's call it, uh, let me just clean some of this up. So do this. We, that's printing the size of it. If I lost my print linked list, that prints the whole thing. Then we can delete node at position. We pass in the head pointer and then we pass in, let's say position one. Um, and then we can print it again. And we can also say printf deleting position one, something like this. Then we delete the node, we print the linked list that prints the size again. I don't think we really need that. Um, for the lecture slides, we're just one ahead, Justin. So just look at the next number and you'll find it. All right, so if we have a look at here, we've got one, two, three, 50 null. We delete position one, which is zero, one, and then we have one, three, 50. The question is, what if we print, so what if we go just create one thing here? We don't even insert there. We don't do that. We delete at position zero. Maybe there'll be a bug, let's find out. Uh, and then we print it. Okay, so it looks like it just doesn't delete it. Interesting. All right, so I guess the question is, should it delete it? And the answer I think is also yes. Um, which also is a great uh, idea to show off some of the debugging features of VS Code and the GDB tool. It's not something that um, we're going to test you on or that's examinable. However, it's a really useful feature um, that programmers use to figure out what's going wrong in our programs. So you can see in Visual Studio Code, I've clicked this here and I've added what was called a breakpoint. Um, and then what I'm going to do is click this button here and then click this button here and 
it might seem like a bit of magic and it kind of sort of is. Um, but what it's actually done here is it's compiled the program like we have been doing and it's run it in a special way that is able to actually pause at where I've told it to pause, right? And I've told it to pause on line 102, delete it position. And what we can actually do here in the editor, and this is really amazing, I think you're all going to find it amazing, is we can actually just hover over the data and see what was passed in. Like this is live. Like it knows I passed in position zero here. Therefore the value in position is zero. And then we can look over here and say position is zero here. Um, and we can even see the memory addresses of the pointers. And like, look at this, you can see that our I variable was not assigned yet. So it's just got some garbage data in it, 32759. Um, and what this lets us do is we can actually see what's going wrong and why our function here didn't delete um, the element at position zero. So how do I actually then manipulate my program? I've got this thing up here and there's other ways that you can do debugging. You can do them in um, the command line with GDB. This is using GDB under the hood. Um, and then we can basically say, okay, I just want you to run the next instruction. So current just got assigned to head pointer and you can actually see current just changed. I can run the next instruction. And what we should see now is previous should now be the same value as head, which is this value here. And hopefully if that worked, you can see these two numbers are now exactly the same. I, we should see come to zero. It makes a lot of sense because we assigned it zero. We have our while loop. We can see what current is by hovering over it. Current is a struct with data of three and a pointer that points to null. How do I know that's null? Null, the null pointer is just zeros, which is really, really cool. Um, and then we can, can just continue running it to see what's happening. So let's think about it. Is current null? Current is not null, right? Because current has data in it. It's not equal to null. So it um, is going to run because this condition is true. Position is zero. I is actually zero. So this is correct. Um, these two numbers are the same. So we know we want to delete it. The problem is um, that previous is the same as the head pointer and we are setting its next to point to the current's next, which should be null. So basically previous is next will point to null, um, but there is no previous because we just initialized previous to point to the head pointer. So the bug is sort of um, coming from this line here only in a single element linked list. You might have to set up the debugging. Um, oh, you might have to, there'll be guides and stuff on it, but you might have to install the C extension by Microsoft into VS Code um, to get it working. Yeah, debugging comes from the extension. Okay, so here's our problem. We don't, there is no previous node, um, right? So a particular way that we can fix this just going off the top of my head is to not actually, and we can, I think I'm happy to stop this debugging session here because um, I want to start thinking this. I think this is, this is the unsafe part. We should actually assign previous to null because um, Previous will be set here if it actually was able to loop. So then we, what we can say here is that if previous is null, okay, then we have a single, then we are in, we actually want to do this up here. Uh, you can use Visual Studio Code in Tiger VNC, or you can use it locally. So you can open VLab and then open VS Code, and then you should be able to do it there. Okay, let's sorry, let's think about this again. Um, so if we're at position zero, 
then previous will be null. So I think we might actually need to, I'm just thinking, we might actually need to hard code it in. No, that's not right. If the previous is null, well, this is only happening if I is matching it. Okay, so if previous is null, then um, we can just, I think we can just free current and return return head pointer. Does that make sense to people? And we don't actually do anything. give it a go. So if there's no previous, which means it's the first time it's looped, which means it's item zero. Yeah, we can't return that because it's been freed. Yeah, we can return. Um, can return null, I think. Because that's what current's next would have been. Because we can't point to it because it's been freed. Deleting position zero, okay, that didn't work. Deleting position zero and then it's still printed there. Well, why don't we set a breakpoint? here, do it again, see what's going on. Tammy and Patrick might have some ideas as well. Yep, good, exactly right. We don't need that one. We can continue to the next breakpoint. That's what this first button does. All right, so current is three. So at the first element, position is zero, I is zero. Is previous null? It should be. So we free current, which is the head pointer, which should have the date of third. Okay, so it gets freed. And then we return null. We come back to the caller. Oh, that was here. Uh, we never actually, I guess we need to say uh, free current and then we say head pointer equals null as well. Yes, okay, because we copied it in. I yeah, but that might actually not work because this is a copy of the head pointer. So that won't actually work. But the memory was freed. Hmm. This might be a more... one. Did I return null pointer? But yeah, but I'm ret it doesn't matter that I'm, I return null pointer in. Yeah, I guess that's what I would have to do. Tammy's just telling me I might have to say, like, for example, head pointer is equal to that. But it still would be nice if I didn't need to do that. Yeah, so I mean, that works. Um, yes. The, the, yeah, so because I'm passing in a copy to the pointer by setting it to null in the function, it won't actually help us. There's another way we can actually get around this that I'm gonna talk about after the lecture break. Um, so that's pretty exciting. Okay, so we got there on that edge case for this one. Um, 
All right, let's do... Do you want to do five minute break, then Kahoot, or Kahoot, then five minute break? And then more linkless stuff. Yeah, that's all oh, very good, Daniel. Alex Brown says, um, I'm still kind of confused what a node is. Can someone give an everyday sort of analogy so I can understand it a bit better conceptually? So, um, a node. I mean, if we think about what a node is in this case, right, um, Alex, a node is just a struct. Um, it's just what we're calling this particular struct. It's the name we're giving this struct. Um, but a node is essentially just a container with some data and in this case, um, a pointer to another element. So, I mean, there's not really... I can't think of any everyday analogies. Um, Tammy, Patrick, analogies for a node? I mean, and, and, and yeah. Mm, yeah, metal chain. Although that would be a doubly li linked list, I suppose. People in a queue. Yeah, it's like, yeah, Tammy's, Tammy's closest, I think. So it's like, imagine, you know, there's a line of people and everyone's pointing to someone in a linear sort of fashion. Um, I am the node and I point to someone else and then you can go to that person. That person's a node. Yeah, like a rope bridge, for example, something like that. But I mean, also don't let us, don't let the name node scare or complicate things. It's just a struct with an integer and a pointer to another struct. I know a lot of analogies coming in. Okay. Let's do the break first. Um, five minute break, get some water, do what we need to do. And then we have some more linked lists. Oh, then we have a Kahoot and then we have more linked list uh, stuff. Cool.
Okay, let's do pause that, open this. Uh, no, why is there no music? Dashboard music, dashboard music. Oh, there is music. Is it just quiet? <clears throat> um. I could cut so. Freshly baked this morning. Let's get started. If you missed this, I apologize. Let's go. All right, link lists in C. I'm pretty sure the answers are correct this time, so. True or false, linked lists use more memory than arrays. Linked lists use more memory than arrays. True or false? Almost 50 50. 23 said yes, that's true. 20 said no, that's not true. Let's really quickly just simply look at it. This is our node that makes up our linked lists. We have our data, which is the integer. What do we also need to store? We also need to store the pointer. Um, that's not free, it, it's not as much data as an integer but it's still some memory. Um, therefore, linked lists always take a little bit more memory to store than an equivalently size. You know, obviously if it's the same, um, exactly the same data in the data structure itself. Um, is the music still too loud? Yeah, I might put it down a bit. Okay. 
Well, if you had a massive array, obviously you also had a massive linked list. So, but because you've, the, the answer is because you've got to store the pointer. Um, it always takes a little bit more memory than an array. Not much more, but a little bit more. And if it's really, really huge, then yeah, of course it adds up. I'm so glad Franco Cozzo is on the top of the list. Okay. Well, this is a long question. Is it impossible to create a linked list yourself in languages that don't have pointers as available types? What a question. Don't speak. There's a bit of a double negative there. Is it... Hopefully I've corrected there. Is it impossible to create a linked list yourself in languages that don't have pointers as an available types? <laughs> oh my god, the exact same breakdown. That's insane. 23 to 20. Um, this quiz is supposed to be a oh, good point, good point, good point. Yeah, it's odd that it's the exact same ratio. I wonder if it's the exact same 23 students. Yeah, that's a typo, yeah. Okay, 23 said false. Um, even though there are languages where you cannot create a pointer, um, like Python, um, you can just use the reference of the object as the list itself. Um, so it's, it's, it's possible for sure. Okay, I promise the rest of... Uh, oh, we lost Frank. We lost Frank. I told you it's, it's a harder one today. All right, what is the benefit of a linked list over arrays? They are faster to find an element. They're more complex, so I look smarter. That's always a good benefit. I can randomly access a value, um, or they are faster to insert an element in the middle of the data structure. Okay, there we go. We've fixed the ratio. Although it looks like a lot of people just didn't answer here. Maybe I've lost... We've lost faith or something like that. But yeah, um, the benefit of linked lists is that you can just restructure... Um, <laughs> Def's blue. No one's clicked it. You can restructure the, the composition of the linked list. Um, oh, you got timed out. Ah, okay. Hopefully... Yeah, okay. But yeah. Um, only arrays are randomly accessible. That's their big benefit. They're not faster to find an element because um, they're a bit slower because you have to follow the pointers. <laughs> yeah, I should have ticked that as an answer too. Okay. Question four. The arrow operator returns the address of the pointer and follows it to the value. So we talked about this just in the lecture. D references the address of the pointer and follows it to the value. D references the address of the pointer and accesses its memory, uh, its member, or returns the address of the pointer and accesses its member. Okay, well done. Most of you got it. D references the address of the pointer and accesses its memory, uh, its member, excuse me, absolutely. So it takes a pointer, it follows the pointer, then accesses the member of the struct. Um, the next highest one dereferences the address of the point and follows it to the value. That would just be the asterisk symbol, um, not the arrow. Okay, a lot of movement on the board today, but Trace may end number two is coming in. All right, final question. Ready? Yeah, you got to be quick. Stream delay messed you. Okay, maybe because they're longer questions. Okay, linked lists um, can be doubly linked, can be triply linked, are contiguous data structures. Cannot be cyclical. Nice and short. Four, three, two, you gotta be quick. One, can't allow Googling. Okay, yeah, well done, well done. Well done. 28, can they can be doubly linked? We've sort of mentioned that a bit. They can't be triply linked, there's no such thing. I suppose there could be, then it's not a linked list. Nine people say they're contiguous data structures. They're not only um, arrays are not linked lists. They can be cyclical. Okay, what's that done to the leaderboard, if anything? So contiguous means the memory, all the elements in the data structure live right next to each other um, in memory. They're in one block. Whereas linked lists, if we look at congratulations, Shreya, Samaya number two. Um, first again, so close, slappy dog. Coming in um, third. Well done. <laughs> you got to invent a triply linked list. Um, okay, leave. 
So the thing is, you, you, you can't have a triply linked list. Once you've got more than, um, once you've got like a non-linear structure, then it's no longer a linked list and it's a tree or a hash or something like that. Um, for it to be a, linear, uh, a linked list, it has to be linear so that you can either have a reference forward or a reference back, but nothing really else. Um, but if go invent something, why not call it the Renzella list or something? Then I'll, that'll be nice. Can you have a linked list that also happens to be contiguous? Yes, you could, I suppose. Yes, you could, but then you would lose the benefit of, well, then, so good question. The question is, can you have a linked list that also happens to be contiguous? So if we go to our whiteboard, what that is saying, so contiguous, right, means, let's delete all this. Contiguous means if I've got some data, they live right next to each other. This is how an array works, right? And this is why in an array, if I want to access, you know, this is say, this is just the index. So what, zero, one, two, three, four. If I say, hey, I want to access element number two, I know where it is because I know they're all next to each other and I know where we start. So I can just go one, two, three, and then access it, right? That's what contiguous means. Linked lists are not contiguous because one could be over here, two could be over here, four could be over here, and then they're... The link is what helps us know the order, right? Um, the question then would be, well, so someone's asking, can you have a linked list? You can't even see the arrow, but where they're all linked to each other. And the answer is yes, you can. I mean, this is a linked list and it's contiguous. The problem now comes if I want to insert this, uh, this element in here, I'm stuck like arrays again, either I move them all over here. You know, I'm just, I've just built an array with unnecessary linked lists, uh, unnecessary pointers, right? So, okay. All right. So two more things I want to show you today. Um, yeah, unnecessary complex array. There are arrays that you can use if you want to um, be really smart again. Okay, all right. Um, let's clear this. Two things I want to show you. So we have this delete node position. Okay, what if I want just like a nice function that helps us just delete um, the head node? Um, struct node head pointer. Um, Let's come down over here. What if I want to have something like this? So just delete the very first node in the list. Well, this is where we start to go. Uh, I don't know. Explain this is a bit. Let me think about it. I think this is where we can. I, I wanted to put this in here because really it's not necessary, right? I can just call delete node at position and pass in zero. That will delete the first node, the head node. But sometimes we want to make these like nice APIs or these nice functions that are easy for people to use. And it might just be easier for me to say, well, just let's have a function that just deletes the head, delete the first element where I don't need to pass in an index because I know it's always going to be index zero. Um, so what do I do here? Well, I can just make a function, you know, that calls and passes it on and return it and that's it. That's how I would write that function. So I'm not actually doing anything new here. I'm using this existing, you know, robust function that we've tested and I'm just passing in this zero. Um, and now I just get this nice sort of helper function that doesn't do anything new, but is maybe a bit nicer to use. And when you look at robust software systems or libraries, you know, collections of code that people give to us, you'll see things like this a lot where you'll do something properly once and then you'll just have some nice functions that, um, you know, sort of help us around and, and let us do that. Cool. Um, Gabe says, just to confirm, I know we're doing this because we need to understand data structures, but surely some C libraries exist that contain all linked list functionality. Yeah, absolutely right. There are, there are really robust 
um, linked list libraries that have written, you know, sort of a lot of time has been spent on them to make sure that every single edge case works and that whoops, they're very efficient and they've been well tested and documented. And if you're doing some, something 90% of the time, you would use a library like that. Like you, like you've pointed, I got to stop playing with the pen. Like you've pointed out, we're just doing this to, um, the best way to understand something is to, um, to build it ourselves. Okay. <laughs> yeah, cool. All right. All right. I've got one more function to talk about today. And yes, it's going to take maybe 30, 35 minutes. Um, why is this function important? So if let's all sort of just loosen up. It's been a long, an hour and an hour and a half. Um, oh, the face cams disappeared. Yeah, it took that long for people to tell me. Okay. Let's loosen up. This function is a bit of a doozy. Um, but I think it's so important because without it, um, we lose a lot of the value of linked lists. So this next function is really important for really appreciating what linked lists can do for us. Um, but it will look maybe a bit weird. <laughs> so, um, okay. So let's think, remember oh, we, we, we did this in the Kahoot. Kahoot. What does linked lists give us that arrays um, are really bad at? What's the benefit of linked lists? Yeah, so inserting an unlimited size, what people are saying, both correct. Exactly right. Nickel's got it. We can insert elements in the middle of our linked list. That, that, that's the benefit. But so far, all of our functions do something at the end or at the beginning. So we've, we've really not done anything that's taking advantage of linked lists. Do we see what I'm saying? So the function we're going to write now, um, we're going to write right now is, well, let me write it first. We can go do it uh, maybe under print. Maybe here. Um, and it's going to be called uh, struct. No, and I got to look at my little notes here. Insert. Um, I'm going to call it insert in sequence. I'm happy to call it. Now I'm going to sort of bury the lead a bit. Okay. And this is the function. So let me just describe what, what we're building here for a second. So insert in sequence takes a sorted linked list. And I'll talk more about what that means in a second. And adds a node in the correct position in the linked list. So if our linked list was something like um, three pointing to five pointing to 10, let's say, right? The number, let's say six will be inserted after five. Does that description make sense? Let, let's, I know you're all freaking out about the double asterisks, so I get it, but let's just think about what it is we want to do first. We take a sorted linked list which means it's a linked list in some ascending value like or descending, but it's sorted. So three, five, 10, one, two, three, four, five, something like that. We take in a, a, a number, you know, whatever it is, our payload. And we want to put it in the correct position. So it could be anywhere in the linked list, right? And this is what we're saying is the benefit of a linked list is I can restructure um, these linked lists as we go. I'm going to... Talk about why we have this when we do this on the whiteboard. I'm going to take it slow, I promise. Um, <clears throat> the reason we do it, um, I'll explain. Okay. So, let me write the function. 
and then we'll whiteboard it and it'll make sense, I think. So again, let's break it down again. Step one, let's think about it. Um, we need to go through the linked list until we find um, the, the whoops, position we want. So that's the first step, right? We need, to, we need to go through our linked list, accessing each node um, until the data we're inserting is greater than the data that we find. Okay. So let's build that out. So the current, uh, sorry, struct node current um, is going to be equal to, now here we already have sort of one thing we need to think about. Our head variable here is a pointer to a pointer to a struct node. Our current node pointer therefore needs to be the result of following the head pointer once so that we get the same level of pointing. So current is going to behave exactly the same as it does in all of our other examples. Again, when I do this on the whiteboard, um, a, a lot of this will click, hopefully, hopefully. Um, and then we're going to do the exact same thing with previous, except it's going to be assigned null. So like a lot of the ways we're doing the other things, we have this reference to the current node and we have a reference to the previous node. All right. We know we need to loop here, so we're going to have a while loop. Um, while the current node is not null, and while the current data, okay, so the, again, if we have this linked list like here, while three, so we're actually looking at the value itself because we, we care about the order of the data, um, is less than the data that we have. You could also swap it to do data is uh, greater than the current data. But basically, so if let's say data is data is, let's say it's seven in this case, um, we'll say is three less than seven? Yes, then we want to loop. Is five less than seven? Yes, then we want to loop. Is 10 less than seven? No, therefore we want to put it in, right? So that's our while loop. Okay, so this is what's happening. We are not yet at the correct position. So therefore what we want to do is just progress our loop. So the previous is going to be the current and the current is going to be um, the current next value. So that's pretty straightforward, I think. And let me know if we have any questions there. Um, Damien is saying, why would we want a pointer to a pointer? The reason we have this is actually the same reason that we had the issue with, uh, what was it? Was it inserted end? No, it was. Deleted position. And I'll, I'll, I will explain it when we get to the whiteboard. I think that's where it makes the most sense. Okay. So this is looping through, um, checking that current is not now, so we're still in our linked list and that we're not at the right position. Once we're at this position, okay, data. So the linked list value is now greater than data. Therefore we insert at previous. Okay. Um, all right. We're accepting data here. So actually what we want to do is make a new node, create node, and it's going to be um, creating it with data um, there. And when we create a node, we can point the next uh, we can give it the next value and we know that it's, we want it to be hooked up so that the next value is current because we're inserting just before the current node. So now we have this, uh, struct, hold on, 
struct node new node. Um, now we have this new node that is pointing to current and we need to now just point um, the previous node to the new node. The new node now already prints uh, points to the, the current node. So if previous is not equal to null, right? So if we even have a previous node, because we might not if it's the beginning of the node, um, then the head is going to be, um, sorry, excuse me, let's swap that. If the previous is null, so if there's no elements or only one element in the array, uh, then we're saying the head is equal to the new node. And actually, if you're paying attention, this line here is the reason why we need to pass in a pointer to a pointer to head. It's because I actually want to change where the head points to. I actually want to change, if we go back to main, I actually want to change where this head pointer points to. And that this right here is the reason we need to pass in a pointer to a pointer. Because even when I pass in a pointer to a function, it copies the pointer. It's a copy of the pointer in the function. So if I changed the value of head pointer, it is not changing in main. Just like if I pass an integer to a function and change the integer, it does not change in main, right? We all know that. It's the same thing with the pointer. The pointers are passed exactly the same. It's the same reason why in our delete node position, when I changed head pointer here, right? Remember I set this to null and it didn't change in main. I had to do something else. Do you remember that? I know this is fairly complicated. It didn't change in main, which meant I had to return it and reassign it in main. But by passing in a reference to a pointer, a pointer to a pointer, I can dereference it at one level, change it, and that means it will change in main. Okay. But again, I think the whiteboard is um, going to help us uh, really understand this. Okay, we're back here. So this this... This is the reason we pass in head like this. All right. Else, so if we do have a previous node, then we need to hook it up. So the previous next, oops, yeah, um, is it going to equal to this new node. New node already points to next. Um, and so actually we're done. And I think we, we can return head here, but it might not be necessary. Yeah, the whiteboard's going to come in clutch for sure. And that's actually it. That's the function. Um, I'm pretty sure we need to return this here. Patrick's just asked me because we only assign, reassign head um, in some cases. I mean, it doesn't hurt to return it back, I think. Because it's just, un it's, otherwise it's just unchanged. Okay. All right. So let's whiteboard this out. But first of all, let's actually prove that it works. Because I might have a bug. You never know. All right. We can, we can create this off just like uh, with a head node of three. That's fine. We can get rid of that. We can get rid of that. We print that out. All right. <clears throat> Um, I can give it, okay, this is actually interesting. If we look, remember, I've got to pass it a pointer to a pointer to a struct node. I've only got a pointer to a struct node. So what I can do here is get the, the address of my pointer, head pointer, and pass that in. And now I want to uh, give it some data. So let's just give it the number five, right? Um, let's copy this a few times. And let's sort of just put some different numbers here. Seven, three, um, or, you know, six, four. So the numbers will be in different order. But when we print it down here, um, we should see what we want. Okay, let's 
hopefully we've got no errors. Looks like I do. Okay. Uh, I didn't define the prototype. Um, you know what? I can just search for, whoops, just search for this. So remember, uh, we have our function here. We need to define it. Okay. All right, let's clear that. Let's run that. Okay, let me just, whoops, that was the wrong symbol. Let me just compile it normally. That's nice. Um, and then run the program. Okay, look at our linked list. Three, four, five, six, seven, null. Even though we inserted five, seven, six, four, you know, that was the order that we inserted it. And that's really cool. This is really cool. Let's think about it. You can't do this with arrays. You just can't do it. It's so much more work, right? In, with arrays. You need to copy all the data, rearrange it, blah, 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 blah. Um, and we only malloc once per each single node. We don't need to malloc the entire size of the array or the link list. Okay. I know 99% of you must just be like, what the hell is going on? So let's whiteboard it. Agreed? Okay. Be nice if I, how do I? All right. Let me, and actually what I can do, I can do something like that. I can do something like this. Um, all right, that, that looks fine to me, I think. Okay, hopefully this is enough room for everything. Oh, that wasn't fine. Okay. Um, all right. Okay, so we've got to do a bit of work here. So that's heap. That's the heap. This can be our function insert in sequence. It accepts our struct node pointer pointer to head int data. We can't really see that, but I mean, you can, yeah, that just cuts off there. Oh uh, yeah, I have a special font that does, um, they're called font ligatures. So if I have certain symbols next to each other, it changes the icon. It's just a, yeah, you can Google font ligatures and read how to set it up. Okay. That's our function here. And then we need one more down here, which can be a bit smaller. Um, and this is main. Okay. Do we all agree that this is roughly the structure of our programs? Um, we can even change some of the colors here. Oh, that, that, that was working. I don't know why I felt the need to change it. Okay. All right. Ooh, let's think about it. Let's just do it for um, the very first time we call it. So, we have a head pointer. In main, right? I don't know how well you can read. Can you see this? Okay. Hopefully that's readable. All right. So we, all we have in, in main is a, is a, a pointer head pointer and it points to null. So let me move this like this. We also going to need our special null variable here. Let's put it here. It oh, it's not, it doesn't point to null. It is null. Um, well, it does point to null because it's a pointer. All right. That's what we've got online there. Um, in fact, let me just check something. Oh, two errors. Uh, I must have put a, 
find 75. I must have just hit a character. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Patrick. There we go. Okay, that also works. So let's do it like this. So we don't even need to... Um, it can also initialize the... Um, yeah, all the compiler. <laughs> Thanks, Patrick. All right. Let's do it like this. So we're, we're going to um, whiteboard this this sequence. So head pointer points to null. We should all be happy on line 24. On line 28, what do we do here? We call insert in sequence, that's this function here, and we copy in, remember when we pass a variable in C, we copy in the value. So we copy in the address um, of the head pointer. Now, everyone, what is the address of the head pointer? Is it this? Is it null? Or is it in main? So not what head pointer points to, what is the address of head pointer? In main, yeah, well, well done, well done, well done. The value of head pointer is null. The address of a head pointer is some random bit of memory in main. It's this thing. You know, we can just call it like 0x111. We don't know what the value of it is. We pass that address in and the number five. So let's jump to the function. And whenever we call a function, its parameters get created. So we have this head um, variable, which is a um, pointer to a pointer here. Now, we just said we copied in the value of the address in main. So it points to main. It points to the variable here, which then points to null. And, and even though pointers to pointers are really scary and complex, um, if we see it visually, I mean, yeah, it's a pointer to a pointer to some data, in this case, null. Um, I'll answer your question, Reen or Ryan or Rene, in a, in a I'll try to answer it in a moment. Does this make sense? This is a pointer to a pointer to a struct node, or in this case, null. We also have data, which is just an integer. In this case, it's the number five. And it's a, it's an int. I can go over here. We can put that over there. Wait, so does the pointer of the pointer point to the address of the initial pointer? Absolutely. It points to the address down here in main. It does not point to what the initial pointer points to. <laughs> it's, I know I sound like I'm, I should be a rapper or something. It, head, this variable here does not point to null directly. It points to main's variable, which is a pointer to null. It's a double pointer. Yeah, too many pointers. I know, but it's okay. All right, and we pass in the, the data five. Okay. Um, all right. Makes sense. Awesome. Now we create a new variable. And it is um, just a pointer. Um, and its name is current. And it's a pointer to a struct, but we assign it, okay, staying, staying with me, everyone. Remember, what's, what's, the, what's the asterisk operator do in C when it's not in the parameters? It's the dereference. It gets the value of the variable. What is, and it does it a single time, it does it once. There's only one asterisk. So what is the value of head? Everyone tell me. So if I follow it once, so 
So basically, here's a really simple way of thinking about it. If you see the asterisk, you follow the pointer and get the value of it. So I follow the address and I get the value. This is a pointer that points to main. Therefore, current will point to main. To null, sorry, not main. Because it's just a single pointer. Is that correct, actually? Now I'm bamboozling myself. It points to the address of head. The address... No, 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 that's not right. That's not right. That's not right. It points down to head pointer as well. Sorry. The address of head is the memory address in main um, of this pointer. Yeah, that, that's correct. Which makes sense. This makes sense because we want current to start off with being... Yeah, it's 0x111. Exactly right. We want it to start off being exactly the same thing that head is starting off as. Okay? The next line here... And just to be clear, like this is... I have to think through this stuff too. It's not like the simplest thing ever. Then we have previous. It's also a pointer, but we just initially sign it to, to null. That's really simple. Maybe let's put null up here. Maybe let's do something like this. I think that's... Oh, that's nice and legible. Yeah, this stuff is not easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. So that's line 73. All right, so far, so good. <laughs> Maybe. All right. I promise it, 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 it gets easier. Okay, we have our while loop. While current is not equal to null, let's look at this. Current... Um, is not equal to null because it, it's got a, a value. It's pointing to head pointer. And current dot data. Um, sorry, current is null. Current is null. The value of current. No, current's not null. No. Yeah, current is not null. No. It's assigned 0x111. Um, but this, this loop will res return false um, because current.data um, is not less than data because it, it current.data is null. No. Tammy's typing to me. She's going to let me know in a second. Yeah, it's pointing to head pointer, which is 0x111. So this will be true. So And then I think this, this part will return false. I think Tammy's going to let me know if that's also the case in a second as well. Um, because current.data, if we... Tr remember, this dereferences it. So we follow it one more time and um, data will be null. So that'll return false. Okay, and we can actually debug it to, you know what, actually, why don't we do that? Why don't we do that? Why don't we 900% make sure we're doing the right stuff by actually following along as the computer processes it? How cool would that be? It's just going to be hard to show everything. That's the only thing. All right. Um... A bit hard to show. All right, so this should all have been set up. Head has this value here. Um, current equals the address of head. So the value of head. But this is saying current is set to null. Is 
this is saying current and value are both set to, to null. Which is which is what that is what I thought it was doing initially, and then I've I've bamboozled myself somehow. Um, I think it's just because head pointer is a pointer that is null, and we but we pass the address of the head pointer, so it's not that shouldn't be null. Uh, okay. Okay, I think Tammy, Tammy's just messaged me that I think this is trying to be helpful by showing the value of it, not the address. Okay, yeah, oh, obviously. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. I've confused myself again. Um, this is the value of the pointer current. Current is a pointer. The value is null, which we know because um, head pointer... That's the address of head, and it points to null here. Um, yeah, the value of head, asterisk head, is, is null, which we know. The value of head is null. The address is this sort of value here. Um, current is being assigned. Current is a, is a node, a struct, um, but it's got no data in it, so it just shows like it's null. Um, the question is, does this actually run? So if we run in here, yeah, the answer is no. So current appears as null, um, yeah, because it's a struct um, that eventually points to null. So basically the answer is there can't be data in it, there can't be next in it, because there, there is no struct actually that's been malloced on the heap. Does that make sense? So it's just followed down to the null pointer. Yeah, there's no data in, um, there's no data in current or head or head pointer. That's exactly right, um, Justin. So current is evaluating to null in this case. The address of current is not null. Um, even though the address it's pointing to is not null, there's, there's, no, there's no struct data. We've not made a struct at all. Okay. And we can see that the compiler, the program, did not run this line. It, it ran down to this line, which is what we expected it to do. Because we do know that there is no data. There can't be any data. We've not made any yet. All right. So this, this diagram is still, um, still correct. Here we make a new node. Um, I can run, I can show the, um, the function, but I think we can sort of move past it. We know that when we create a node, we use malloc on the heap. We're passing in data. Data is five, remember? Um, so it makes a node on the heap. Data is five, um, and it's got a next pointer. The next pointer, we assign it, whoops, um, current. So what is current? Um, basically what we're saying is you are now pointing to the address of current. Current is an address um, you know, so we pass that address to the pointer. Now that's on the heap and we call that new node. What new node is, is just a pointer, um, which points to that memory, whoops, which points to that memory address on the heap. Yeah, my, oh, Maybe a few minutes over time. Okay, let's let's quickly run this. All right. Previous is previous null. Previous is null. There is no data. It's pointing to null. That's really easy. So that's going to be true. So we run in the body of this condition. Then we say the value of head. This is again the, the really magic part. Whenever we have this asterisk, we follow the pointer. So we're now down at the memory location in main. And we say, you are now pointing to, I gotta stop clicking that, the memory address of new node. New node, oh, I never renamed it. I'm getting confused. That's new node. You are now pointing to the memory address of new node, which is over here. No longer pointing to null.
the else is not going to run and then we return. When we return, what happens? It's sad to see all of our work gone. The stack frame is deleted. Not that stack frame. Just what? Remember, that was annoying. Remember, this was pointing here. The stack frame gets deleted. All of that stuff gets deleted. And what we're left with is main with a head pointer pointing to the node on the heap. And that, <laughs> all of that happened um, in this function. Okay, the question would be now, can we really set, can we do that really quickly um, to show... Um, now let, let me just to show it for when we do one more, would that be useful? I know we're going a little bit, a little bit over time. Okay. Let's run this again really quickly. I'll try and go fast, but you can always watch the video again or something like that. All right. We're passing in seven. We're passing in head, head pointer into insert in sequence. So the address of head pointer gets passed into head. Um, this is head. It's a pointer pointer. So this points to the head pointer. Head pointer does not point to null. It points to this data, data over here. Um, and then the data also gets passed and we won't worry about that. Um, we make a couple of more things. We make current, which is just a pointer. And we make previous, which is also just a pointer. Current is equal to the value of head. The value of head is this location here. So we point down to here. Previous is equal to null. Okay. Um, we're, this is the second time we're running this with data is now seven. Okay. So that's those few lines. Okay. Is current null? Current is not null. Current points to head, which points to the, the data on heap, which is element of five with next pointing to null. Uh, so it is worth pointing out actually that this points to null, which we, we know. So that's, that's true. So that will run. And then the other question is, is the current data, so is five less than seven? And that is also true, which means we want to put seven as the next element in the list. So this is all true. So this should run. Fantastic. Previous is equal to current. All right, let's sort of power through this again. Previous is no longer equal to null. It's equal um, to current. Current is equal to head pointer. So it's going to be equal to head pointer. Okay. Current is then going to equal to current.next. Um, current's next is null um, because current points to the head pointer, which points to this value here. Its next is null. So current is now going to point to null. which is what we want to make sure that when we come back to the loop, current is null, so this will not run and we're ready to insert our new node. This is all working really, really nicely. I know we're going a little bit overboard, but um, you can head off and always watch the rest of the lecture uh, later on, guys. Okay, so that worked really nicely. Um, this is actually foul. I thought you said fun. I thought you were going to say fun. All right, we're, we're close. We make a new node. We do it. We're doing that on the heap because we're calling malloc in create node. Its data is seven, um, and we get the address of that in a pointer called new node. Um, and we're assigning that to be this data over here. This points to null as it's next. Um, all right, we run down. Is previous null? Um, previous is not null. It points to head pointer. And if we follow it, it head pointer points to five, 
which is exactly what um, we have here. So it's not null. So it's going to, it's not null. So it's not going to do anything, obviously. And then previous is next is going to be equal to new node. So previous is this one. Previous is a, is a pointer to head pointer, which is a pointer to next. It's next is going to change from null to now be new node, which is like this. That's the end. This stack frame gets deleted. Um, and look what we have. Like magic, we have head pointer pointing to a node with a data five pointing to a node with data seven. And all of that magic sort of, you know, complexity melts away. And this is what we're left with, right? This, a, a, a simple linked list with all the nodes in, in, in the heap. Whew. If you kept up with that, congratulations. If you're still here, congratulations. Um, mapping it out is difficult but I think it's super useful to, um, to see it at least. Maybe you'll need to watch this video a few times um, to understand what just happened. But what we're left with is these new nodes. And if we ran that again, we would see it, you know, you could imagine it, it working. So the debugger helps us, the mapping helps us. Okay, I know that was a lot. Um, you ran out of memory, <laughs> yep. That's completely reasonable. Um, but this is, I think, Tammy and Noah, uh, let me know if you agree with me. This is this is it. This is as complex as 1511 gets. Um, if you can get your head around this, um, you, you, you really, you've achieved what we wanted to achieve in 1511, which is no tall, you know, we know that we're asking for a lot. I'm sure Tammy, and, um, I don't really think there's any concepts in, in 1511 that, um, that get, you know, at its core more complex than this. Sure, adding things together can get complicated, but, and you know, what we're left with is so elegant and beautiful, I think. All right, I know I wrecked you all. Thank you for staying with me. Thank you for being patient. Um, what's happening here? Uh, lecture feedback as always. I know you're all going to say that that was a lot. Yes, you know, you might need to watch the lecture again. What I might even do is um, clip that video, sort of make it a bit more streamlined because it can be hard to lecture or just, uh, and, you know, and explain things and draw things and stream and, and all of this stuff. I'll absolutely post the code to CEC. You can just call me Jake. You don't need to call me Dr. Jake. Um, so, yeah. That was a lot. <laughs> I hope I hope though that even if you don't fully understand it yet, um, I hope you find like you see the elegance in it, or the or the the beauty of it, um, and you start to love that we we as programmers we create something out of nothing. Like we we get we have these machines that we built and then we we do these incredible amazing things with it because. By doing it in this way, it's fast enough that unlocks, you know, we can do certain, we can build applications that are more efficient and then we can do such amazing things. But we really are building these complex structures out of like seemingly nothing. It's, it's I don't know, it's so exciting to me. Um, I hope you, even if you might not fully understand this stuff just yet, that you just at least appreciate um, how cool this stuff all is. Anyway, I'm going to... Um, Whoever created linked list. Yeah. I'm going to post the lecture code now. I got to fix up the lecture PDFs. But like I said, if you want some other references um, for how these um, functions are laid out, you can go look at the lecture PDFs. Um, thank you for making it through week seven. Assignment two will be released by the time we meet next week. Sorry for going a bit over. Have a great rest of the week. Stay safe. Take your time. You don't need to understand this stuff. If you understood this stuff immediately, I mean, you, you're better than I was um, for sure. So you're all doing well. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you, Noah. Uh, Patrick, not Noah. Uh, thank you, everyone. I'll see you next time.